So in, uh, in talking with Doreen this week, I said, hey, let's just, let's just do the same thing. I'll just shed a little bit more light on it this week. <laughs> oh, you're so funny. I tell you what, it just kills me. Oh, man. You know, I look in the mirror every morning and I go, wow, what a nice looking guy. <laughs> it's going to be a good day. <laughs> Sherry's my reality check, though. So um, uh, this morning, so last week we looked at Philippians chapter 2. And looking at Philippians chapter 2, uh, we're, we're, again, we're moving in this. There's, there's really power in the name of Jesus. And that's, that's where we want to be. There's power in the name of Jesus. But there's some setup. I have to be in the name of Jesus, honestly, to, to make sure that there's power in the name of Jesus. Now, probably like you last week, when the lights went off, my mind could not stop. I mean, I was having a hard time focusing on the message at hand. If I had notes, it wouldn't have mattered because I wouldn't have been able to read them. Um, you know, but it was just, just, one of those, just one of those days. And I thought, you know, I could probably be a little bit more clear uh, where I was going and where we we're going. So I'm going to focus a little bit more on uh, the third commandment in Exodus uh, chapter 20, verse 7. So I'm going to go there in a, in a minute. But I love this passage. It's called the Kenosis Passage. It's a passage that Paul put to, uh, it's a passage that Paul probably borrowed from the church. It was, it was probably a song that was created um, in one of the churches that he was a part of, in, or one of the groups, cell groups that he was a part of, one of the small groups that he was a part of. Uh, I'm sure they did not have professional hymn writers at the time, and they didn't have professional songwriters or poets or anything else that they, that they had to um, uh, pay royalties to to get that. So he grabbed it. It was something that was already in the mix. Paul was not a poet. Paul was inspired by the Holy Spirit. Now, could Paul have created this himself? Absolutely. But Paul borrowed from culture so often, I would tend to believe that he probably picked this up someplace so that he could do it. So the very first part of this, verse 5, is not part of the song. It's just part of the setup. Uh, if you are reading the NIV, you'll, you'll, you'll read something like, let your attitude be the same as that as Christ Jesus. That's what you'll read there. That's a reasonable translation. I have no, no problem with that translation. But if you're looking at maybe a King James or a New American Standard that has a tendency to be a little bit more literal, the good part of, of the older NIV, the NIV 84, is that it gives you a more indication of what the passage means that we understand it a little bit better. Because if we just take it literally, then it's going to be hard to get the full meaning because it was written in a different time, a different culture, to a different group of people. And sometimes that's hard to pick up. So um, your NIV, uh, your Revised Standard Version is probably right in the middle. Your NIV tends to lean a little bit more interpretive. Uh, your King James, your New American Standard Bible will lean a little bit more towards the literal. So literal versus interpretive. To give you an idea, the, the single man translation, the Phillips translation, um, uh, the Living Bible doesn't really fit in there. There is the Living Translation. The Living Translations would, would probably be on the other side of the NIV in interpretation. Um, you know, leans uh, more towards the interpretive side. Um, uh, the message, uh, when a single man interpretation, uh, would, would lean very much on the other side. And there are some good things in it, but just, you know, just be mindful. Just like you don't want to take uh, Young's, Young's literal translation, because Young's literal, literal translation is even to the, uh, to the uh, literal side of the King James and the New American Standard. And it's a little further over here. Um, and so, you know, you can't, you can gleam, but you're not going to get, you're not going to get everything. So use what you can and then, and then study, you know, and that's how you're, that's how you're going to get the meeting. So what I've done is I've basically memorized uh, the, the NIV um, in 1984 for this particular passage, except for that first part. And that first part, I've, I've either done the ESV or I've done 
maybe a co-opted version of the King James because I think it is better. I think that's exactly where Paul wants us to go. Not so much attitude, though attitude's included. I think there needs to be a mind transformation. So I go back to Romans chapter 12 where we have uh, uh, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Paul talks an awful lot about the mind because he's speaking to the Greek crowd, and they were all about what's go going on in the mind. And so Paul is always grabbing that. So attitude is in there, but I think it, I think it kind of goes beyond. So, so I take that first, first verse, and it said, and, and uh, as I have it memorized, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself. Uh, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. What a tremendous passage. I just, it's an anthem, you know, and can it be, it's, it's that kind of anthem. You know, it's, a, it's, 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 it's beyond churchy. It is everything is encapsulated in that anthem. Kenosis is that word emptying out. Who being in very nature, God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself Nothing. Kenosis. The word means poured out. And it means poured out. So, so every bit of God was poured out, but made himself nothing. So I want you to think that God, in his absolute divineness, poured himself out into this human shell that we call Jesus. Now, we don't understand that. You know, I joked about the Venn diagram that I used with the kids um, uh, the week previous, you know, tying together these three circles, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and they all intersect right here, and we call that the Godhead. You know, that's cool, but it's just, it's not even close to describing. We can't describe it. We cannot even under fathom. How, how can we fathom Jesus being with God, yet still sitting on the right hand of God, the, you know, the right, right hand of the throne. How can we even grasp that? How can we grasp that God's spirit is, is with us? It, it's just hard, you know, to grasp it. Now, probably a good percentage of us ha have a transformation story that once we were lost, but now we are found and our lives transformed with a single prayer. We got up and we were different. The cigarettes, the alcohol, the whatever, uh, the sin was all left at the altar. Yeah, and we and we didn't we didn't have any DTS. We didn't have any coughing spells. We walked away from it. That's not everybody, right? It's not everybody. You already heard that I was nickeled and dimed to death when it came to my language. So it doesn't all just completely disappear, but there were a lot of things in my life that disappeared. A life that was in chaos and turmoil, all of a sudden, I is no longer chaotic and, 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 and tumultuous. I have Jesus, and I found peace. My life was transformed. The day that I completely surrendered my life to Christ, very intentionally, giving him my all, asking the Holy Spirit to come into my life and change... That was transformation, uh, transforming as well. I had almost two veils that were ripped away. 
There was one veil that was ripped away when I first gave my heart to the Lord. And, and then there was another veil, too, that was ripped away when I realized that I needed to go another step, so to speak. I mean, I made plenty of steps, but I needed to deepen my relationship one more time. And in that, another veil was opened up. And then I was able to see the intention behind things. You know, the little things that, that my relationship with God was more based on rules. But when I released everything to him, my relationship started to become really a relationship and not a rule, rule based. I went from a religion that I found Jesus in to a relationship that allowed me to live with him. Now, I don't think that's across the board for everybody either. Okay, I think when we talk when we talk about entire sanctification, what the Holy Spirit does with us, I do think it can be a little bit, little bit different, just like it is when we ask Him to forgive us of our sins and we first step into the faith. It's a little bit different for everybody. The base is the same. Jesus saves. Thank you, Lord. The base is the same, but it's all a little bit different when it works out into our lives. Why is it? That God can take that alcoholic who comes into the church drunk. You've heard the stories. And you may have even seen some things at these altars, right? Guy comes in a little bit drunk. Gives his life to the Lord. He gets up and he doesn't even smell like alcohol anymore. What happened? I mean, that stuff happens. Has happened. I think maybe we've stopped believing that it happens. And, you know, can, uh, can the prophet do miracles in, in his hometown? You know, I don't know. I don't know if we've gotten so, so used to having Jesus do certain things. Anyway, so that's another story. That's another sermon. So let's, uh, we'll move on from that one. So I'm looking at this grand anthem, of, uh, and it's just a wonderful anthem. Let's move on down. So this is the declaration now. So we find out who Jesus is. He was poured out. He became nothing for us. He, be, he was humbled. He became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Okay, cool. We've got all that one down. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. Now, your translations will say, at the name of Jesus. And, um, and most of the translations out there do cover at. There's a few that will put in the word in. In the Greek... The word is E-N. That, that translates to in for us. Um, by the way, the English language is pulled from Greek and Latin, and so that's why we've got a strong connection. Hebrew is a whole nother animal, but, uh, but Greek, we have a lot in the English language, right? So geometry. Yeah, geometry is the measurement of earth, the measurement of land, okay? That's Greek, okay? Geo being earth, land. And then uh, metri would be the measurement. Okay? That's, uh, the kids weren't impressed either, and I don't expect you guys to be impressed. Okay? I told them that. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> I don't like math anyway, Mr. Nelson, so let's move on. Okay, we're moving on. <laughs> so, where was I at? Okay, in. So, we have the word in there, and really this is instead of at. I am concerned about the use of the word at. I will confess to you right up front, I am not a translator. I'm a hack, okay? I, I've, I've, go, I've, 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 gone through, I've gone through the Greek and the Hebrew. Um, my Hebrew class was horrendous. I mean, I loved it. I loved every minute of it, but it was three hours one day a week from, from 6 to 9 p.m. Ick, okay? And it's nothing but chicken scratch. So you've got to get over an awful lot. The only thing that saved me from, with, with Hebrew is that Hebrew is not nearly as gooey as Greek is. It's pretty straightforward. And you just have to get used to the sing-song nature of Hebrew. So it's pretty straightforward. It's about the only thing that saved me through that class. Greek, on the other hand, it's, it's really ooey and gooey. And uh, I mean, the Greek, the Greek language is very rich. And Paul was an expert in the Greek language. Paul is prolific. Paul can start off with one sentence up here. He'll start off with an idea up here, and he will use modifier, 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 and he finishes it down here. 
It's 20 verses down. One thing is in that. So thank you, Jesus, for translators who get that. Okay? So I'm just a hack. So I'm not putting into question any translations that were made, made by people that are much smarter than I am. Um, and, but you know, as I'm looking over the commentaries and as I'm trying to understand too, um, and I'm not trying to be heretical, you know, I'm not saying that the, you know, the NIV is better than this translation or the NIV is worse than another translation. I'm actually using the ESV right now. Um, I've got, got the NIV here. Um, my, this, is, this is my dad's Bible that he let me pick. My dad wasn't a Christian, and he let me pick out a Bible for him. So when he passed away, I grabbed it. You know? And uh, so this is the, this is the Bible that, uh, you know, that my dad had. And it's large print. I can read it. You know, I can't read that tiny little uh, eight, eight size print. So here I am going through this. I'm thinking, I'm reading these commentaries over here. Every single commentary comments on this word in. And they say you need to be careful in this passage that it's not just a proclamation that when you hear the name of Jesus, everybody just bows down. King Nebuchadnezzar, right? You've got this big old statue. When the trumpet was, when the trumpet was uh, being blown, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had to bow down immediately. They did not. Ended up in a furnace. But that's what this kind of sounds like. At the name of Jesus. And when we hear that, that's what we think too. Saint and sinner, both of them, are going to bow down at the name of Jesus. Here's the thing. We immediately take out free will to that. Now, there is going to be a day. There is going to be a day that we're going to face judgment. And you know what? If I don't know Jesus and I'm standing before him, and he's looking through that Lamb's book of life, what, however they do it, you know, he's flipping, th flipping through it, and, 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 um, and my name's not in there, I still have all the choice in the world to bow down or not. In the Gospels, Jesus, Jesus talked about the, uh, the weeping and gnashing of teeth of, of those that were going to fall into darkness. you remember that? Okay. So now we hear that, the weeping and gnashing of teeth. But we, what does it mean? When you're finally separated from God, there's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When did people gnash their teeth? When they got angry. They gnashed their teeth. They were mad. They were upset. Now, he spoke about this to the church at the time, you know, to the leaders and the Pharisees especially, that they first initially respond, and all of a sudden, they are weeping. They are sad because they missed out. But then they got mad because it was their right to be in. So when you're reading the passage, I mean, have you thought about that? Okay. Now, I'm not telling you anything that I haven't read. Okay. Again, I don't have that depth of knowledge that I can go back to an original culture and pull something out. I have to rely on other people, and then I back that with, with something up, and I back, back that one up, and I do my best to be very studious about it. But, you know, weeping and gnashing of teeth, we say it like it's, they're going to be gnashing of teeth. Well, why are they even gnashing their teeth? Anytime you read gnashing of teeth in scripture, you will find out that they were angry. So they were upset, and they were upset about what? They were upset because they did not get their right. You know, the Pharisees, teachers of the law, the, the more elite Jewish crew. So, so there's a lot of things here in scripture. So at the name of Jesus makes it sound like we're going to be forced to bow down. And I don't think that's where Paul was coming from. I think he was talking about this in, in the sphere of. Ah, now you get why I brought the sphere story in. Ah. In the sphere. The word in, for the most part, like I said, the Greek is a little bit ooey and gooey, but the word in, if I am in the building, I am in the sphere of the building. I'm inside the building. The child that is in the womb is in the sphere of the womb, is, is contained in the womb. Right? Or is inside. I need to be in Jesus. 
right? Therefore, God exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, that in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess, should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Ooh, there's power in that. So I'm in. So I need to be living in him. If I'm going to discover the power of his name, I need to be in him. I need to have that mind transformation. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I need to have that mind transformation where my mind has, uh, has, has, uh, has um, uh, uh, merged with Jesus' mind. Now, folks, it doesn't make it any easier because Jesus says, hey, you are who you are. Now I just need you to include me. And little by little, you will become more like me, but you will still maintain who you are. I'm not going to take that away because it is something that I've created in you, but I am going to add myself to it. So there are going to be adjustments. So people that knew you before Jesus and people that knew you after Jesus will see something completely different. But Jesus won't. Because he, he, he knows your makeup. That's where he's at. So in the name of Jesus, I think, is probably where this should be. In the name of Jesus. Before I can have his mind, I need to be in his name. I need to be in the sphere of him. If I'm ever going to get that power of Jesus' name, that when it flows out of my mouth, we're not talking about magic, and we'll get to that later. When it flows out of my mouth, people will hear Jesus. I think that is, I think this can be very much connected to uh, uh, Exodus chapter 20, verse 7. This is where we find the Ten Commandments. And in the Ten Commandments, you shall have no other their God before me. You shall not make any graven image. Uh, and, then, and then we hit this third commandment. And the third commandment uh, is this. Do not, you, you should not um, use my name. You shall not use the name Yahweh, the Lord, your God, in vain. If you do, you will not be guiltless. You'll be in trouble. Okay. Now, we've taught that with children. And we've taught it with children. You know, be careful, you know, with your words. You know, don't don't use just flippantly use God's name. I think that's a part of it. Just like, uh, just like attitude versus mind. I think that's I think that's a part of it. Um, I think I think that, you know how that's kind of come across, but I kind of see a little bit more into that, and it's and it's me being in Him that makes the difference. So let me throw a couple things at you. You you shall not use take. Bear, carry, all sorts of words here. Lift up. This word is, this word is used constantly for people lifting up their eyes to the Lord. Lift up your eyes to the Lord. Same word for use or take, depending on which version. Okay, I, I, well, I get that. And it's also a word that means to lift up. Noah's Ark. Okay, the waters came in to flood everything. And what did the flood waters do? The flood waters lifted up the ark. Same word, use. You shall not use. You shall not carry. You shall not um, um, uh, lift up. Take. The name Yahweh, your God, and make it nothing, vain. Don't make it vain. Don't make it nothing. Don't make it nothingness. Don't make it meaningless. Remember when you went from the King James to a modern translation and you're reading uh, Ecclesiastes. And in Ecclesiastes, it says, vanity, vanity, all is vanity in the King James. Remember that? And then you went over to this new translation, and all of a sudden, they're using, because we have a different definition of vain. 
Okay, it's, it's me looking in the mirror thinking I'm good looking. Vain, okay? <laughs> okay, that's, you know, when I think of vain. But then all of a sudden in the newer translations, I'm seeing meaningless, meaningless. Everything is meaningless, right? You, you guys know those translation changes there. And I thought, eh. Well, that's the word vain. It's the same word being used here. So basically it's saying, do not lift up my name. Do not bear my name, Yahweh, and make it meaningless. And, and make it like it's nothing. Like it's in vain. Do you think that includes making an oath in God's name and not keeping it? Yes, I think it includes that. Jesus says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Right? He says, just stay away from all that. Don't swear anything by God's name. Just let your yes be yes and your no be no. Now, I, now connect that to, right? Don't swear anything in, in God's name, in the, in the name of the Father. Don't swear anything in that. Just let your yes be yes and your no be no. That is being in him. That is being in his sphere. That when you hear me talk, you know that my yes means yes and my no means no. Because I am not bearing his name in vain. I'm not bearing his name meaninglessly. I'm not bearing his name and allowing it to mean nothing. It changed my life and it means everything. And I need to reflect that in his name. So I think there's more to it than that. Does it, does it mean the stuff that comes out of, out of my mouth? I need to be careful with the way I use Jesus' name or God's name? Yes, absolutely. I think that's part of it. But I think the main push of it is bear, bearing or carrying the name. Christian. Little Christ. I reflect that. So what does it look like? Do I bring meaning to people's lives because I wear his name? Because I am in his name? Is there this majestic power? Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. So when I walk, when I walk into a conversation or when I am a part of somebody's life, when I'm developing a relationship, do I have this? Is it reflecting this majesticness of Jesus? Okay, there's not a halo around my head. I don't know if you guys listen uh, for King and Country, but they've got a wonderful song. It's called Broken Halos. You guys just need, to, just need to listen to it. It's Broken Halos by For King and Country. It's just a really cool song. You know, it just talks about we're, we're a bunch of people with broken halos. Okay? I'm not trying to say that I'm more perfect than everybody else. I'm, st I'm, I'm, still, I'm still growing constantly. And I want to be growing because that's where God wants us to be. So I'm looking at this commandment, the third one, and I'm thinking... If I am going to bear, if I'm going to carry the name Yahweh, personal name of God, Moses, still trying to get out of talking to Pharaoh. I, 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 I just does, does better. <laughs> Use Aaron. He does better. Well, I will. And, but eventually Moses took over, right? And so, so all this stuff. Then he tries one, one more tactic. Okay, I'm going to get this burning bush anyway. <laughs> I don't know what's going on in that burning bush. I'm going to get this burning bush anyway. Okay, the Egyptians got all these names for their gods. What's your name? He goes, I am. I am who I am. I was. I is, and I will be. Oh, I used that last week, didn't I? Okay, but I'm trying. I, I was, I am, and I will be. That's what he's saying. I am who I am. So in other, in other words, I'm, you know, I am this collective of everything. 
Well, that's, that is extremely cool. And uh, so Moses takes that in, and he says, this, you know, he says, not in the way we heard it, but he says Yahweh. By the way, when we, whenever we hear the word Jehovah, Jehovah is an English, uh, I don't know, version of Yahweh, okay? They, got, they, 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 they claim they got it from Jewish people who would not say the word Yahweh because they did not want to use God's name in vain, in nothingness. So, so they would use, you know, Yehoah, Yehoah, something like that. And uh, I don't know, I don't know. Anyway, God's good with this. We're not using it in vain. We're just giving it people his personal name. And I guarantee you that Moses did not, did not say, you know, did not skip it. He didn't go jump in a tub of water and clean up before he said it when he went to Pharaoh. He just said it, okay? But so there's all this stuff is going on with this particular word. And God is saying, I want you to be in my name and do not misuse this name because it is all inclusive of everything. And here I go. I am walking in as Christ representative. I'm walking in as a Christ example. I'm walking in as Christ himself into every situation that I walk into. And I don't bear this as a burden because Jesus already told me that his burden, burden was easy. And as, as I go, his burden was light and his yoke is easy. Something like that. There you go. See, I know, I know some of you think I'm perfect. I stumble. Okay, I do stumble. So, um, and so this burden is not there, but I carry this name. I represent this name of Jesus. So all of a sudden, this third commandment is more, is more than about my speech. It is about who I am as I represent the great I am. Then, when I walk into that relationship... When I speak, when I speak to the bank teller, when I talk to the server, when I reach out to my neighbors, they will see that there is a name that is higher than every name. That there is a name that is able to transform lives. That there is a name that will not only provide peace here on this earth, but also an eternal home in heaven. There is a name. And that name is represented with me. Let your mind be just like Christ. Let it be transformed. Let this mind be in you. Just like it was with Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He doesn't take away our free will. But living in him allows us to represent who he is. I am not afraid of any of God's commandments. I'm not. That's because I am in him. And I'm doing everything possible to live accordingly. Even, let's see, 40 plus years, 40 plus years of being a Christian, he's still working on me. You know, I don't know, I don't know about you guys, but the things I was tempted, tempted with as a teenager and as a young adult, 
I'm not tempted with those things now. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, boy, do I have a story on that one. <laughs> but the things that I'm tempted with now are completely different. Do I take a nap or don't I take a nap? No, it's not. Okay. Lord, I don't have the energy for this. My temptation. I don't have the energy for this. Okay? My temptation. Sometimes I, sometimes I take advantage of my age. Sometimes I take advantage of my personality. Lord, that's not me. It's not who I am. He's still working on us. He's still changing us. And he can change us. doesn't matter if we're 100 years old. He can still change us. Amen? Okay. Did I shed a little bit more light on it? Yeah? Sound a little bit different than last week? It's because I don't use notes and I didn't reread them. Okay? That's why. <laughs> have one point. In the name of Jesus. Okay? And I need to have my mind completely transformed in that name. And I need to bear it well. I need to carry it well. Okay? And if I'm not carrying it well, I'm going to stay on my knees until I get there. Okay? That's, that's why I'm in the weight room. I want to remain as healthy as I possibly can. That's why I watch what I eat. I want to remain as healthy as I can. Because, not just because the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, but because there are still people out there that need Jesus. And I know 35 kids who have to tolerate me every, every Monday through Thursday, uh, through Thursday. Yeah, I don't go to school on Fridays. I skip that one. No, no, I don't. <laughs> you know, Monday through Friday. Um, and I've got, I've got a staff, I've got colleagues that need Jesus. And, um, and, you know, somebody asked me if, if, if I, if I wanted to be, you know, if I wanted to get back into the pastorate, <laughs> Reverend Gilmore, <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're desperate, aren't you? Okay. That's I, I look at, I tell, I tell him what it is. I say, you're desperate. You're a desperate man. You want me to be about, <laughs> and I, and, and. I've thought, I've thought about that. Now, of course, that's, you know, it's been well over a year. Uh, you know, he's, you know, so where are you going to be, Dwayne? And, oh, you're retired. No, I'm not retired. I have to have an income source. <laughs> so um, I pastor Vanderbilt Public Schools. Just like you folks pastor your family, not pester, pastor your family and you pastor your neighbor and you pastor that person at the register and you pastor that server makes a difference doesn't it total strangers you pastor okay sometimes you're the apostle sometimes you're the evangelist some sometimes you're the prophet sometimes you're the pastor teacher but that is our role, and it doesn't always happen in a building, does it? It shouldn't just happen in the building. It should happen every place that we go, as you go, right? Boy, this all ties together, doesn't it? Okay, let's, would you stand with me? Let's pray. Father, we are so thankful for this scripture. It is, it, it, it's, it's truly phenomenal. I mean, I could almost hear Paul say this, and I'm sure he used it. I'm sure he used it with several of his sermons as well. So majestic. Therefore, you gave him the name that is above every name, that at your son's name, Jesus, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. We get that, Lord. We really, really do. Help us to represent it well. We want to be in your name. Mind, body, soul, spirit, whatever. We want to be in your name. Completely transformed and representing you well. You told us. You shall not 
misuse, misappropriate your name. You shall not bring it to a place where it is meaningless especially in how it represents to others. You should not bring it to a place where it means nothing to others. We want to represent you well. That's where we're at. Father, forgive us for the times that we've stumbled over this. And no matter how long we have been with you, short time or long time, raise us up and help us to be a people that are completely and utterly sold out to you and sold out to bearing your name with meaning so that people don't see it in vain. That they will see it and be changed because your name is lifted up. Thank you, Lord. For your forgiveness. Thank you for taking us right where we're at and giving us a step, two steps, three steps to get a little bit closer to you. There's an old song in a musical, Lord Jesus. Michael Jackson and Diana Ross sang it in The Wiz. <laughs> He's on down the road. And there's one little line in there that says, when your left foot's down, lift your right foot up. Lord God, that's what we're doing today. We're not going to stand still in our faith with you. Our left foot's down and our right foot's up. We're going to ease on down this road as you transform us and make us into the people that you want us to be. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We are yours. We praise your name forever. And all God's people said, amen. 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 How'd I do? Oh, not too bad. Not too bad this week.